You know, throughout the marketing for this movie, The Rock keeps saying that Black Adam is the most powerful DC character in the world, and I think this movie exists just to prove that point. Hi, welcome to the Gaha Brand YouTube channel. If you're new here, we talk about comics, movies, and collectibles. So if that's something you're interested in, consider subscribing. Oh, and this will be a non-spoiler and spoiler review of the movie. So, Black Adam is the origin story for DC's newest anti-hero, Black Adam. If you watched 2019's Shazam, Black Adam is actually Shazam's opposite, essentially, the venom to his Spider-Man. He's the champion that the Wizards chose incorrectly. He also happens to be one of my favorite DC villains because he's on the same power level as Shazam and Superman. So how is the Black Adam movie? To be completely transparent, I had a total blast with this movie. Granted, there's almost no story whatsoever. The movie is about 65% action, and I'm just going to roll with it. <laughs> but first, let's break it down. Now why am I making the claim that this film has no story? It's because Black Adam is a very reactionary protagonist. Right when he's awoken in modern day Kondok, he has no goals. He's not trying to recover his memories, he's not set on liberating Kondok, he doesn't want revenge on Shazam, the person who put him into hibernation, so stuff is just happening to him. He quite literally just goes through it. Now does the story have any merits? Um, yeah. I would say the most compelling part is Black Adam's actual origin story. While it is told through narration, thus giving it a cheap feeling, there actually is a purpose behind the voiceover. I've also been hearing people complaining that this movie has a lot of plot holes. I saw the first 10 minutes of this movie, and I instantly understood what I was watching. And I think the filmmakers knew that too. Because if you don't just let yourself enjoy the action in this movie, you're really missing out. The action is the absolute highlight of this movie. Like I inferred at the beginning of the video, I think this movie is just meant to showcase how much of a powerhouse Black Adam is. From the moment he shows up, he's just an unstoppable force of nature, and I'm here for it. If Superman ever does come back to the DCEU, I really hope he's depicted like this. It actually reminded me a lot of Feyora's fighting style in Man of Steel. And yeah, you could say it's just mindless destruction, but at least there's diversity in the battles. Black Adam fighting soldiers, Black Adam fighting the Justice Society, Black Adam pursuing soldiers on high-speed flying motorcycles. It's all very fun and crowd-pleasing. As for characters and performances, The Rock has low-key always been my dream casting for Black Adam, just because of his physique. But on top of that, The Rock has always been great at playing imposing, unstoppable forces and I think that's a perfect fit for Black Adam. Yes, he is still just The Rock, but this time he's playing a semi-evil Rock. Although my favorite part about Black Adam has always been his god complex and philosophies, and unfortunately none of that is translated here. The standout performance here is Pierce Brosnan as Dr. Fate. He's not only able to be smug and wise, but he's smug because he's wise. He gives off the same energy as the most interesting man in the world. And I also have to say that his costume looks amazing. As for other characters, I'm just going to run through the list. Hawkman, kind of annoying because of how on edge he always was, but his fights with Black Adam were fun. Adam Smasher and Cyclone, I really didn't mind them. I thought they were fun little filler heroes to add to the Justice Society. Cyclone did confuse me though because she made me think that Tessa Thompson switched to the DC for like half the movie. Sarah, she's like 5% Lara Croft, 20% Revolutionary, 50% Mother, and... 100% I don't remember what else. Uh, the kid, I found him a bit annoying as well, but I'm not a huge fan of the bright-eyed kid converts the big bad guy trope, but at least I understand he serves a clear purpose. The brother, he was very funny. I like him. Oh, and the villain, he he's just terrible. I don't remember his name. He's just like a normal guy, and I don't understand what drives him. You know, you can't say power, because that's so vague, and it's a very weak motivation. The film was also kind of strange editing-wise. I noticed that a lot of the lines in the film during conversations were never given room to breathe. It's like how I edit my videos, where I just clutter all the sentences together. I do that because I'm not giving a performance, I'm just presenting information. But in Black Adam, it's just line A, line B, line A. 
Nobody save for maybe Dr. Fate thinks about their words before they spit them out, and it's all due to the editing. On a related note, the movie also has some odd musical choices. There's a ton of licensed music, and again, there's a time and place for that, but when I walk into a movie about a 5,000 year old slave that gets his powers from Egyptian gods, I don't expect the song Power by Kanye West to be featured. But Black Adam's theme was pretty good, so the musical score is alright. Before I reach my verdict on the movie, let me mention a couple of things that I actually did like about it. For one, Black Adam's country of origin, Kondok, is a huge part of the story. Not only does most of the movie take place in Kondok, but the film really emphasizes its people and how they need to be led by someone they believe in. If you don't know, Kondok is essential to Black Adam's comic counterpart. He rules the country and he'll do whatever it takes to protect it. It's like his whole character. One of my favorite gags is that Black Adam keeps forgetting to throw in his catchphrase, so he ends up saying it after he kills people. While again, I don't think this fits well with the tone of Black Adam, I don't mind it because you know one day he's going to meet Shazam, and I think it's a good idea to have the two characters share a cohesive tone before they meet. Now it's already time for the verdict, would I rewatch Black Adam? So okay. This is where my rating system is inherently flawed because I honestly had an incredible time with Black Adam, but it's definitely not a good film. <laughs> with that being said, the question is, would I rewatch Black Adam? And it's a definite yes. My favorite films are those I can watch repeatedly. It doesn't matter if they're poorly made or well made, if I enjoyed myself during a movie, then it has value to me. And that concludes the non-spoiler section of the review. If you've seen the movie, or you don't care about spoilers, then go ahead and stick around because we are now in the spoiler zone. Okay, as always, I'm just gonna jump around with my spoiler thoughts. Of course, first off, Henry Cavill's Superman is back in the DCEU. I'm so happy that all the rumors were true. Yeah, I know, The Rock implied it in a bunch of interviews, but all I really took away from his statements is that Black Adam and Superman will eventually meet, not that Henry himself would show up at the end of this movie. You know, it's really funny looking at the progression of Superman in the DCEU. I feel like he gets the same reception as Doctor Strange in the MCU. People aren't really excited to see him when he's a major character. But when he makes smaller appearances like in Shazam, Peacemaker, The Snyder Cut, and this movie, people are happy to see him. He also has a lot of off-screen progression. He's pretty serious in his first two appearances, then he dies, and in both iterations he wakes up more lighthearted. I just find it interesting. And I've seen other people online notice this tonal change as well. A lot of them mentioning that Superman went through a literal rebirth. But I have a feeling that DC isn't really planning as meticulously as Marvel would, and I think the directors have just coincidentally placed him in a lighter mood. Now I do want to talk about Dr. Fate, because I feel like his character was wasted for the future of the DCEU. Of course they could always choose a new wielder for the helmet, but I really like the Dr. Fate they established in this movie. Granted, I did feel like he was slightly underutilized here as well. Dr. Fate should be stronger than Black Adam, but in this movie, Dr. Fate straight up admits that Black Adam is too strong for all of them. On the flip side, I do really like that DC basically treated Black Adam as a force of nature in this movie, so much so that I thought the movie ended when Black Adam was imprisoned. I really thought that that was it and they were just going to save him for a later installment. But of course, there was more to pay off, like finding Sobok's crown, but on the note of payoffs, I thought they were setting up Eternium to be Black Adam's weakness, because when he wakes up in Sarah's apartment, he has a pretty deep cut that was clearly made from Eternium, so I thought they were going to finally hurt him for real, but no, it, it never came back. And the last thing I want to talk about is Sabak, or rather the process to get to him. It was super convoluted and out of nowhere. They skimmed by the explanation so quickly that I don't even remember the full plan. But I just know you have to die or something, and I guess Black Adam specifically needed to kill you? Yeah, this was probably my least favorite part of the film. But overall, I really enjoyed my time with Black Adam. It's not really a good movie, but it's definitely a fun one. And for me, the biggest thing we should take away from this movie is not the presence of Black Adam, or even Superman in the DCEU, but the presence of The Rock. I'm being serious. Based on all of the interviews and stuff, The Rock seems like he has a real stake in this franchise. The proof is in the credits, he produced the movie. So with this new powerhouse behind the DCEU, I think he'll really help to propel it to new heights. And that concludes my review of Black Adam. If you liked what you heard, please consider subscribing, and tell me what you thought of the movie down below. But until then, see you next time. Bye! Yeah. Time to
I flare it wrong. Yeah, bitch, I flare it wrong.